Mark Merowitz is a professor at the State University of New York Maritime College, and he joins me now live uh, from New York. Professor, good to have you on with us. Uh, I'm wondering why do you think we saw these countries take this step, this step back and issue this statement? Well, I'll take a step back for a moment and try to understand how this all happened. It's really very surprising. Um, Ambassador Satterfield is a, is a Korea diplomat. Um, I think he's on his way out because um, uh, because Senator Jeff Flake was nominated as ambassador. He has years and years of experience. So it's very, very surprising that this happened at all. But I think that um, the stepping back, I mean, I think U.S. and Turkey are close allies. And the idea of um, you know, putting a U.S. ambassador, as well as the others, at the Pisana Non Grata was really kind of an unthinkable event. And uh, it was a good thing that uh, both countries uh, decided to uh, figure out a way to uh, tone it down uh, by signing Article 41 of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. And that is the end of it. And you heard Ned Price at the State Department. I read all his remarks, and they are very conciliatory. So I think uh, the tension on this issue is over. Uh, how it started at the beginning and became such a big issue uh, is very hard to understand, to be very candid. Yeah, I mean, what does this mean for Turkey's relations with its Western allies? I mean, obviously the tensions are diffused for now, but has that tarnished that relationship at all, particularly with the U.S.? No, I don't think so. I think, you know, look, U.S.-Turkish relations are in, um, you know, something of a you know, difficult or complex phase. And that's also because President Biden is very distracted uh, by COVID and by the infrastructure bill and, and by China and all these other issues. So Turkey needs attention. It's going to get attention when, you know, Biden and Erdogan uh, meet or, or, or converse or discuss issues. And that's a good thing. Um, as far as the Western countries, uh, why they joined into this thing is really, you know, again, I, as I say, it's just, it's just a very, it's a conundrum to me. I don't understand it. This is not the way diplomacy is conducted by ambassadors making tweets and making statements about other countries while you're serving in the country. Usually diplomacy is behind doors and done by the State Department, foreign ministry. If you don't like something, you say it. But at the same time, you see the statements of Ned Price also allude to, you know, commitment to human rights and all of the statements are being made. So I think at the end of the day, we put a level set in here and we're kind of back to where we were and hopefully there won't be any further, um, uh, you know, disruptions uh, in our relations that cause, you know, president of a NATO ally to, you know, to even contemplate placing ambassadors of major countries into Pisana Non Grata, which uh, if you look at the history of Persona Non Grata, I mean, that's just uh, a very, very excessive, excessive uh, uh, step. Yeah, you know, it's really interesting, like you said, how this all came about. And you, you mentioned Twitter, and it is interesting as well how often Twitter is involved in, in, in a lot of these uh, diplomatic spats these days. Uh, you know, we have the G20 summit coming up this weekend, COP26 as well, starting on Sunday. Are, are we likely to see um, Erdogan with me, any, with, with Biden, President Biden, or any of these other world leaders in an attempt to um, make a new start, perhaps? Well, I'd like to see another good fist bump between President Biden and President Erdogan. I'd like to see good relations between Turkey and the United States. And that takes place at that level. Once again, I go back to the point that you have a career diplomat with years of experience uh, putting out a tweet like this. And it's really just, as I said, it's just mind boggling to understand this. And then another nine ambassadors join in on this. Um, well, okay, but why do that? I mean, in other words, what was the value added to do that? And why not just convey your concerns or whatever it is in the proper diplomatic channels? Uh, it's hard to understand why this occurred. Um, the new ambassador coming in, Senator Flake, is a friend of Turkey, has been very helpful and friendly to Turkey. So we want to keep that uh, relationship in a good way. And when Biden and Erdogan get together, and of course, President Erdogan meets with the other leaders at the summit, um, I'm expecting that uh, this uh, kerfuffle or this blip in the relationship will have been hopefully forgotten and we're going to move on because I don't think there's any, you know, lasting damage. Maybe a few ruffle feathers, but I don't see any lasting damage on this one. I don't think so. I hope so. Yeah, I certainly hope so as well. And, and like you said, uh, so mind-boggling how it even got to that point. But we're going to leave it there for now. Professor Mark Mirowitz joining us from New York. Thank you.